Hey guys, welcome to a new Dungeon Defenders 2 video. I'm your host, Mr. Peter, and let's learn about proton beams and reflect beams. Before we start, the video contains flashing lights due to the reflect beam and the proton beam. So any photosensitive viewers watching this video, you probably should skip this one. I do, however, have the build listed in the description below. If you do want me to explain why I have chosen these mods and shards, feel free to take a chance and roll dice by watching this video, but proceed with caution. All right, let's talk about the mechanics for the defense. Reflect beams are anti-protectile shields. They protect objectives, towers, and barriers. You can place up to four nodes per reflect beam. You see that little light that is traveling to that node, then it sparks up. That spark is a mini explosion, which does AOE damage. Each node can detonate and damage the enemy. The range is very small by the way, so the enemy has to be very close in order to take damage. Speaking of damage, let's check it out. It's dealing 1.98 million damage, which means that, that node is doing 1.9 million, that node is doing 1.9 million, that node is dealing 1.9 million, and that node is dealing 1.9 million, which is crazy damage. However, it deals less damage the further away the enemies are from the nodes. Here you can see it's dealing 1.9 or 1.8 to this dummy. Now when we move this further back, you can see the damage falls off significantly. It's no longer 1.9 million. Moving on to proton beams. Proton beams are very simple defenses. It's a beam. Once the enemy steps onto the beam, they are slowed and take AOE damage. All right, let's go right into the build. This is the reflect beam, controller, tenacity, defense rate with shattering torpedo, vicious strikes and destruction. And this is the proton beam build, poison, controller, defense rate with destruction, vampiric and defense rate. Let's talk about the proton beam first. The most important thing to do is to max out the tower's attack rate. So we have a gilded defense rate that will allow us to max the attack rate. Proton beams have fixed range, so having a deadly strikes or a range mod on this tower is pointless. And lastly, we have destruction and vampiric, so we're sacking on damage shards to deal more damage. For the mods, we have poison. This is the most important mod on this tower. The rest are optional. The reason why we have poison is because it synchronizes very well with shattering torpedo. It's a shard which is on our reflect beam. Shattering torpedo does earth damage. For new defenders who don't know this, poison and earth create this elemental combo which turns enemies into stone. This is called petrify. Once the enemies are petrified, they take increased damage from any source of damage. Very strong CC and it helps us on wave clearing too. You don't need to have a 10 poison mod by the way. It can be a level 1 mod. As long as you have poison, it's all good. But you know, 10 the more damage. Our next mod is controller. The reason why I have chosen controller is because once they are stunned, oiled, chilled or petrified, they take percentage damage from controller. And lastly, we have defense rate. The reason why I have chosen defense rate is because against frost orcs, we need to overcap our defense rate in order to beat them. Again, we don't need a 10 mod, but it's helpful to have a 10. We also have a second proton beam build, which is this relic right here. Poison, Tenacity and Controller. Tenacity will help us against Cursed Kazi lanes in Onslaught. Cursed Kazi reduces the tower's attack damage. However, having a Tenacity will prevent that. It must be a 10 out of 10 and you must convert it to Chaos 8. I recommend getting both builds, but if you had to choose one, I recommend build one as build 2 is not important, but it's very useful when you're climbing past floor 200. Honourable shards for the proton beams are frosty beams. Frosty beams has a chance to freeze units. This gives us that extra CC to stop the enemies from coming past. And lastly, we have destructive pylon. This will buff defences around the proton beam, which is very useful. Moving on to the reflect beam. This build here is very precise. You must have a 10 out of 10 defence rate. You must have a 10 out of 10 tenacity. So when we do convert this tower to Chaos 8, it will have the max attack rate because we have a 10 out of 10 defense rate. It will have 100% tenacity because of our 10 out of 10 tenacity. Having a 100% tenacity will prevent sideboards from stunning our stuff. As long as you keep your auras behind the reflect beams, 
The cyborgs cannot do anything to them and will continuously attack the reflect beams. A very good counter to them. It's extremely important to have these mods at a 10. No 9s, no 8s. It must be a 10. Lastly, we have controller for the percentage damage. For the shards, we have vicious strikes. You can find it in mastery or prime. This will allow us to reach the max range for this tower. Unfortunately, you cannot cap the range without fissure strikes, so you must have this shard. Shattering Torpedo, you can find it in Onslaught or you can go to the Grandmaster and buy it. This does the earth damage, which will synchronize with the Proton's poison. Lastly, we have Destruction for the extra damage. Many people use this tower for their main DPS. You can replace Destruction with Mass Destruction if you'd like. We have a second build which is the same thing but you replace controller with anti-melee. Both are very good builds but I personally prefer controller as it affects all units in the game. Now that we've talked about the build, let's see how we would use it. There are many ways to set up the reflect beam. This is how I normally set it up. I do the box shape. However, others may do the T shape. It doesn't matter. It's up to you guys to decide on that. With the proton beam, we mostly do the arrow shape or the V shape. This will allow us to have more coverage on the area to proc the poison mod. Of course, you can place your flame aura, your boost aura, or whatever defense you want behind it. This setup right here with the proton and reflect beam build is a kill zone. Once the enemies walk into the zone, they will be petrified from the poison proton and the earth reflect. They will take huge damage from all these towers. This is why most experienced players run this build because it's insanely strong. I know this is a lot to take in, so what I've done is that I put everything you need to know in the description below. Before we end this video, I'm going to play a Chaos 7 game and show you guys what these towers are capable of. And welcome back, we're in our favorite farming map, Unholy Catacombs. We're going to be using our suggested build. For our Proton, we're using Poison, Controller, Defense Rate, with defense rate, destruction, and vampiric. And for our reflect beam, we're using controller, tenacity, defense rate, with shattering torpedo, vicious strikes, and mass destruction. The reason why I'm using mass destruction instead of destruction is to show you guys what DPS reflect beams are like. I'm just going to use these two defenses, and of course, flame roars for the air units. We're going to have two boxes, and then arrow protons. On this lane, I'm actually going to do T-shapes to show you guys the different variation of the setup. I rarely do T-shapes as it takes a while to set up. However, some people are masters at it and do it super quickly. And finally for this lane, I guess we can do box shapes again. I think everything is done. Oh, I forgot the flame auras. Can't forget about those air units. We're going to take a closer look on how this setup operates. As you can see, DPS reflect beams do insane damage and wave clear pretty well. They're barely touching the proton beams. When they do touch the proton beams, that's when the magic happens. Let's check out our T-shaped reflect beams in the middle lane. Yep, still holding up. The reason why most people run this setup is because you have three nodes in the front, which are doing the most damage. So once they get petrified, they take damage from all three nodes instead of two. 
but I do the box shape because it's easier to set up. Okay guys, you get the idea of this combo. It can wave clear. What I'm going to do, I'm going to skip it to when the bosses come out. Yeah, you can see the lady ought to get petrified and die instantly. Again, very good CC. Nice, we have a skeleton boss. Hopefully he isn't slow enough to die by the reflect beams. Awesome, we got to see the petrify in action and it completely stopped him from getting forward. And I believe he spawns again so we can see his death again. <laughs> Poor fella, didn't stand a chance. Ooh, we have an ogre. I'd rather see him die. I completely forgot to mention that this combo is fantastic against assassins. Once you step into the kill zone, those assassins will instantly turn to stone and die. Way better than using cannibal towers. Mind you, in Onslaught, sometimes you get headstrong assassins who are immune to being stunned. That's including being petrified. So watch out for them as they're very sticky and hard to survive against. Like I said earlier, this combo, super strong. Highly recommend everyone working on their reflects and their proton beans. Just checking what boss we have next. Yeah, another skeleton boss spawning again. Oh, we actually have two of them. Let's quickly check it out. Wow, absolutely destroyed both of them. I honestly love this combo. Yep, Dreadfront's here. And we also have a Gridlock. Really want to check both of them out, but we know what's going to happen. Ah, uh, Gridlock died before we could see him. I absolutely hate assassins. Such annoying units. That's the Reflect Beam and Proton Beam combo. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As you can see, these towers are awesome. Before I end this video, I want to show you another strategy for the Reflect Beam. You don't have to put one down. You can add another one to dish out more damage, just like this. Because there's so many nodes close together, it's going to be very difficult for the enemy to go through them. Even more difficult when you add other defenses too, like the Flame Aura, the boost aura, the lightning aura, etc. As always, thank you guys for watching and if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more DD2 content. Next time, we'll be talking about the boost aura. Take care.